Different nuts are going to do different things to my glucose. So I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor. I'm gonna test a bunch of different nuts. So I've got peanuts, I've got honey roasted almonds, which are gonna do something interesting. I've got Brazil nuts, I've got macadamia nuts, I've got sugar-free versus regular chocolate covered almonds, because I'm curious to see what happens with the sugar-free version. Hazelnuts, pecans, and a different macadamia nut that has some like unsavory ingredients in it, like maltodextrin and some other stuff, just to show what, what happens there. Now, I've been fasted for about 17 hours now. Full disclaimer, the first reading is probably going to be the most accurate because I'm fasted. I'm gonna do this throughout the course of the day and I'm gonna to try to give about 45 minutes or so between each reading. Now, full disclaimer, we're not gonna be able to get an accurate two hour postprandial effect. So we're going to look mainly at like the 30 minute effect, what happens in the first 30 minutes after consumption, because we just don't have enough time to get a two hour effect as well. As the day goes on, as there's more of these nuts in my system, they will blunt the effect a tiny bit, but we'll still get the acute response. So I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna jump in with one right out the gate. Let's just start with pecans. And I just wanna show what happens with my continuous glucose monitor here. So like that right there, that's my run this morning. When I went on a five mile run, it dropped down to, about 80, 81 or so. Now, I'm a low carb person, so typically um, that means my glucose kind of hovers around like 90-ish during the day uh, because I'm pretty active. Right now, it's sitting a little bit higher, probably just because I'm filming a video and maybe stress levels or whatever, but I'm at about 98, so it's a good place to start. 10.40 a.m. right now, and I'm gonna dive into this first one, so I'm gonna eat pecans, and then what we'll do after I eat these suckers, is we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll see what happened to my glucose. As right now, it's a 98. Let's see if it even changes at all. I love pecan. All right, we'll see what happens. Okay, good news on pecans. It's been about 45 minutes. The highest spike that I had after consuming those pecans was about 20 or so minutes afterwards and my glucose went up to 101 from 98. So if 98 was my baseline, I only went up three points from pecans. Pecans are awesome, by the way. They're one of the lowest phytate nuts that you can have. Okay, they're also very low omega-6 in the grand scheme of things. So pecans really are a great choice, and clearly they didn't impact my blood glucose very much. I wanna jump to something a little bit more fun. These are gonna be honey roasted almonds, and these are gonna make me feel probably pretty cruddy because we've got almonds, sugar, vegetable oil, almonds, canola oil, safflower and or sunflower oil, honey, salt, and corn maltodextrin. Um, Obviously this is gonna, well, I hope it's gonna have an effect, otherwise that's gonna be interesting to see. But I'm curious to see exactly how much because we do have fats combined with sugar and fats are supposed to kind of attenuate a glucose response, but I just wanna compare this and I also wanna see what happens, how much I crash afterwards. So only in the name of science will I have this. It's about five grams of sugar per serving in about an ounce. That's probably about an ounce right there. So here we go and we'll check back in about 30 minutes or so. Oh, those are sweet. Okay, it's been 40, 45 minutes or so since I had the honey roasted almonds. Surprisingly, this is no BS, I only spiked up to 105. So it is a testament to combining fats with those carbohydrates and how that can have an impact. But there's a couple things we need to be very cautious of with that. Combining high amounts of sugar and high amounts of fat is not really recommended. I want you to think about a time in nature where fats and carbs really exist together. Like if we were foraging, we'd find maybe some fats and maybe, some, maybe we'd find some, some fruit along with some nuts. But if we were hunting, we'd really only get meat and fat. And then when we're foraging separately, we'd probably get berries. So we're probably designed, in my humble opinion, to get them in separate times. So I'm not a big fan of combining fats and carbs. So I would never like electively go and consume honey roasted almonds. I don't think that's the best thing, but pleasantly surprised. So my glucose is already coming back down. It's down to about 102 already. So very little spike. Now, one of the things that I want to test next is going to be the Mauna Loa macadamia nuts. Now, I'm disappointed in this because the onion flavor, which is my favorite flavor, is well, macadamia nuts, but then maltodextrin, dextrose, garlic powder, yeast extract, which is basically, um, basically like MSG, it lights your brain up. Canola oil, they've added canola oil to, it doesn't make any sense. To, by the way, macadamia nuts are the best quality nut you could probably get. The lowest omega-6, okay, they're also really high monounsaturated fat, so really high specific omega-7s, just really good fatty acid profile, and we're talking two grams of net carbs. 
why would you take a perfectly good oil and turn it into that with malted extract? And I'm sure they taste good, but, so anyway, I'm gonna eat these guys, I'm trying to get about an ounce. My glucose is gonna be down to about 101, 102. I'm gonna eat these now that it's been a while since I had the last batch. Let's see what maltodextrin does. See what these macadamia nuts do. Okay, what happened here is a classic example of why I'm not always a fan of combining sugar and fat. Okay, there's two things that could have happened. The maltodextrin from the Mauna Loa macadamia nuts could have spiked me, or I could be having a delayed spike hours later from the honey roasted almonds. Now I'll show you this spike in a second, but what can happen is if I consume straight up carbohydrates without a lot of fat, I might have a high spike, but at least I come down fast. And if my body's healthy, I'll come up and then come right back down and balance back out. What can happen if you have a bunch of fat with a bunch of carbohydrates is yes, it can attenuate that glucose spike. So it can make it so you don't spike as high, but it can drag it out for a while. So check this out. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if the maltodextrin from the macadamia nuts, the monoloa macadamia nuts, caused me to spike a little bit. It had uh, maltodextrin and dextrin in it, which are two very high glycemic things. I've also personally noticed that when I have things like yeast extract or MSG, I spike really high too. My theory behind things like yeast extract and MSG is they're excitatory, they light your brain up, and I think I actually get like an adrenaline response that causes a glucose spike. So it's hard to tell, but you see how I'm having this double spike? That's very common. You usually have a spike, come down a little bit, and then another little spike after that. So again, I can't say that the Mauna Loa macadamia nut maltodextrin caused me to spike this high because unfortunately, you know, back here, I had consumption of honey roasted almonds. The fat in those almonds could just be delaying the spike so much that I'm just now spiking. So I don't wanna particularly say that any one thing caused this, but it's definitely a culmination of different things. And it's definitely the combo of having the maltodextrin and the sugar before that's causing this. I can't eat another nut until I get this glucose down. So I'm gonna ride the rower or do something to get my glucose down so I can test another one. Dude, I'm learning my lesson. Like having those honey roasted almonds followed by macadamia nuts with maltodextrin, I spiked high. I did 50 calories on the rower, 100 calories on the Echo bike. And here we are like 15 minutes later, basically doing a mini workout. And I'm just now starting to drop down to 115. It would be irresponsible for me to test something right now when I'm on a downward track. Because let's say I grabbed something right now, I ate it, and I continued to drop as a result of my exercise, it would give us a false reading and it would just be disingenuous. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to stabilize. And then the next one that I wanna test are gonna be a different kind of macadamia nut that's the same flavor, but doesn't have the maltodextrin and doesn't have the other stuff. Uh, and then we'll test out a few more things and get on with our day. Okay, two hours later, <laughs> my glucose is finally down to about 106. I'm gonna call this stable enough to at least move on to the next. This is wild, actually. I'm totally surprised by this. I was not expecting to have that much of a spike. Who knows, like, I haven't eaten anything else. I'm not adding protein in, I'm not doing anything. But next up, I'm gonna try these dry roasted macadamias from House of Macadamia. Yeah, they're a sponsor on this channel and I don't wanna make it sound contrived. Um, but I did go ahead and I put a link down below. But the thing I wanna try about these is, these are 93% macadamia nuts. The only other ingredients are onion powder, sea salt, garlic powder, and parsley. So I'm curious what happens if I eat straight macadamia nuts that don't have a bunch of maltodextrin and stuff on them. And I think it's just a fair test. Ideally, I would have liked to just test these side by side, but I wanna test other nuts too. So I'm gonna eat probably about half a package of this and we'll check. I don't anticipate much of a change because there's only macadamia nuts. These are pretty darn good. And again, I don't want to sound biased or contrived, so. Mm. It's so good. The link down below is also a 20% off discount link if you want to check them out. They've got a bunch of different macadamia products. Okay, we'll see what this does. Okay, this is interesting. It's been about 20 minutes or so since I've had the macadamia nuts that don't have the maltodextrin on them. After today's video, I popped a link down below for House of Macadamias. If you like macadamia nuts, you gotta check them out. That's a 20% off discount link that also gets you a free box 
of sea salt macadamia nuts. So a full box of macadamia nuts plus 20% off whatever you want. All grown in South Africa, harvested less than an hour's drive from where they package and do everything there. So we're talking fresh, we are talking the best bargain you're gonna find, especially with that discount, and we're gonna find wholesome ingredients that actually benefit the farmers themselves. So that link down below, if you wanna try some amazing macadamia nuts, House of Macadamia is changing the world. We're seeing Tim Ferriss talk about them, we've seen Joe Rogan, we've seen them all talk about them now, so we know they're legit, we know people like them, but that link down below gets you a special discount. So check them out. I'm going down. Now, full disclaimer, I don't think that these macadamia nuts are going to lower my glucose. Uh, there's a lot of benefits to macadamia nuts, like there's something called omega-7s. Omega-7s have been demonstrated to actually improve beta cell function, at least in rodent models. So it could allow the production of insulin to be a little bit more, let's say, astute, so it can actually bring my glucose down better. There's always that possibility that the uh, palmitoleic omega-7 acids are doing that, but I don't think it's the case. I think what's happening is I'm still going down as a result of that nightmare back there when everything happened. Um, what's interesting is that despite the fact that I have had macadamia nuts that still have a couple carbs, without the maltodextrin, I'm still going down. So this is, or at least stabilizing at 101. See if I refresh it. Yeah, still staying steady at 101. So I'm gonna give it a few more minutes, but I think I'm ready to try the next one here in just a second. Again, I popped a link down below if you wanna check out House of Macadamia. I don't wanna make it sound contrived or anything like that. It's just, if you're looking for a cleaner macadamia nut, I do recommend that one. Okay, so it's been a couple more minutes and I've kind of stabilized. I was at 101 before, now I'm back at 104. So it means I'm not really going down anymore. Now I wanna try no sugar added dark chocolate covered almonds. Here's the ingredients, dark chocolate, maltitol, that's gonna send me to the toilet later, chocolate uh, liqueur, let's see, soy lecithin as an emulsifier, salt, artificial flavors, sucralose, roasted almonds, confectioner's glaze, it probably still has a little bit of sugar in it. Um, it says nine grams of sugar alcohol, no added sugar. Let's see what happens. So again, I'm at 104 right now, and I'm gonna eat a few of these. This is a lot of nuts today, so I'm definitely gonna be feeling this. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay, check this out. So sugar-free chocolate-covered almonds spiked me so far up to 126. That's a pretty significant spike. So I've gone from 101 up to 126 in, let's see, about 25 minutes. And that's with sugar-free. So there's not supposed to be any added sugars. It's just like a sugar alcohol, like maltitol. This is a classic example of just not knowing how something is going to react in our body. There's nothing in that almond that would make me think I would have a crazy high spike. This isn't unusually high. This isn't out of control. But considering, like if we look through everything, you know, starting about here is when I really started consuming nuts. You can see each little blip when I consume some. Then we've got the maltodextrin disaster. And then I came down from that. And then we've got the mac nuts that actually continued to help me drop. And then the sugar-free ones. Like, the point in me showing this is that really just going pure is better. Like there's nothing to be said more than that. Like we could talk about every little nuancey carbohydrate that's in the nuts, but the reality is it's when the additives are in the equation that we start having problems. Because there's nothing to, like if we start looking at the pecans, if we look at the macadamia nuts, if we look at straight up regular almonds, the blips are gonna be very, very similar because the carbohydrate content and the fiber is super, super similar. But when there's additives like maltodextrin or maltitol or sugar, that's when we start to run into problems. So I'm gonna wait for this level to come down a little bit more. And the next one that I wanna test is regular sugared almonds, like regular ones that are sweet. Because I'm curious to see what happens if I eat chocolate covered almonds and see what the difference is between those and the sugar free chocolate covered almonds. That's the big thing I'm curious about. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you. I will be here all night eating a bunch of nuts and it's gonna be very uncomfortable if I keep pushing this much further. I've had nothing to eat today but nuts and it doesn't feel amazing. So the only ones that I'm gonna leave out is I'm gonna leave out the peanuts and I'm gonna leave out the hazelnuts. I just, I think they're gonna have a very similar effect. But one that I really wanted to test out is I wanna test out the regular sugared almonds because I'm very curious to see how much of an impact they have compared to the sugar-free almonds that actually spiked me quite high. So this isn't something that I normally do. I have straight up sugared almonds. I'm probably gonna have a headache like crazy from this, but 
It's in the name of science. So this will be the last one. And let's see what these actually do in comparison. And also to sort of figure out, does adding fats to sugar actually lower the glycemic effect all that much? And is that something we should be paying attention to? Does it really matter? Or is it more important to focus on time and range? If I'm adding fats to these sugars and it's just making me stay out of my glucose range for a longer period of time, that could be problematic. I guess we'll find out. Okay, this is wild. So this thing has taken all day, okay? But I wanna show you this. I'm all done now. Check that out. Okay, that red spike right there, that's the sugar-free almonds. The next spike that's lower, that was the almonds that had sugar in them. I spiked higher from the sugar-free almonds than I did the regular almonds. Now, I have a theory. My theory is that I am insulin sensitive. So when my body took in regular glucose, it knew how to deal with it. So it spiked insulin accordingly. It's a perfect example of how if you're insulin sensitive, this could actually work in your favor. The maltitol was kind of a foreign substance to my body. So the fact that I spiked higher is really wild. The only other thing I can consider is that because I had more fiber and more fat in my system, by the time I took in the sugared almonds, it didn't impact me as much. The bottom line is, nothing is what it seems. This is exactly why you need to test and why you need to see what works for you because even the maltodextrin spiked me high. The maltitol spiked me really high. Just so bizarre. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.